at COCA. Why? Because the construction is done. Well, I should say the majority of the construction is done. And so this is our home. It's going to be our home. We don't know when quite yet we're going to be allowed to be back in here as a group, but it is here and it is going to be better than ever when we're allowed. Kicking off today's program, we're going to do 10 big belly breaths. So breathing in through the nose, again, pushing our air down all the way down to that pelvic floor, pushing our sides out. We should be really good at belly breaths right now. Keep in mind, the main reason that we do the belly breaths is so that we can mentally put ourselves in a state of taking time for ourselves, right? Setting that intention for the next 30 to 45 minutes. Roughly that's how long it should take you to get through these. Typically our classes here are an hour. We're aware of that. Um, there's usually a little bit more social time involved. So typically our at-home workouts are gonna take you 30 to 45 minutes, depending on the workout. So after we've done our belly breaths, we're gonna come in with our PVC pipe or our band or our broom, and we're gonna do 10 shoulder roll-ups. So wide on your hands, we'll come through, touching the lower back, bringing that bar all the way back and around. So we should feel that physically touch the lower back before we come back into the center. 10 of those. From there, we're gonna drop our bar down to the side, into our back and around, called around the world. We're gonna do five in each direction, right? So 10 in total. Once we've done that, we're gonna leave our hands where they are. Think about taking our bar overhead an overhead position, we're looking to have the wrist, the elbow, and the shoulder stacked in a straight line, squeezing through our upper back here. Where we're going to head into 10 overhead squats, so heels outside of the hips. From there, we're going to come down, getting that hip to crease the knee. Weight should stay rooted in the heels. A little too far in the heel. But we're going to do that for three rounds. Remember that we are doing handstand and shoulder stability work, one or the other. There's no right or wrong, you can bounce between the two, but most people that are doing the shoulder stability work are doing that because they don't want to get upside down. If you don't mind being upside down, really try and push yourself to do the um, handstand program. The shoulder stability work today is a 25 foot bear crawl. So remember with our bear crawl, Ideally, we're going to hold a nice flat back. It's going to give you the most work through that core, the midline, sometimes called midline instead of your core. But when we think about a plank position, or even in this case, right, our tabletop, our knees are lined up under our hips, our wrists are lined up under our shoulders, our back is nice and flat, a nice quality bear crawl. We're just going to tuck the toes, slightly raise our knees off the floor about three inches and crawl from there versus sometimes you'll see this nice big high hip bear crawl. Not that that's wrong, but you're losing out some bang for the buck. So try and keep yourself as flat to the ground as we can be. From there, we're either going to come into a seated press. You can sit on a chair, a bench. You could also sit on the floor. A lot of times you'll see um, this called a Z press. So feet out in front of you. If we've got a bar, great. Go ahead and press with your bar. If we've got dumbbell in each hand, we would then press from there. And if we have just an odd object or a kettlebell, we can come into that center and press from there as well, right? It's all about working with what we've got, even if it's not ideal. All right, from there, I've got my notes on the whiteboard over here. We're going to do a Tricep kickback. So bent over, dumbbell in hand, or odd object in hand will come through on the right and then on the left. So we would do them separately, not in total. And we want 10 minutes of quality work, right? Remember when we're doing work for quality versus a fast AMRAP, we want to make sure that we have good, solid reps. We're controlling our breath, trying to consciously think about in through the nose, out through the mouth. I know that's easier said than done, but when we're working for quality, it's a great time to do that. If we are doing the handstand work, we are going to do 10 minutes of handstand practice. If you don't have a spotter and you don't
don't trust yourself, walls are a beautiful tool to start self-spotting. So if we're working on handstand practice or hands walking on our hands, usually we're comfortable kicking on a wall. So a great way to come at this would be to set yourself roughly three to four feet off of the wall. So I know that if I kick up and I kick too hard, that momentum is gonna take me into the wall. Our goal is to kick up with enough softness that we control that, All right? So maybe we need a couple kick ups, just working on kicking up. And once I get comfortable, then I can move my hands into the wall. The more you do that, the farther away from the wall you wanna start working. So 10 minutes for both of those in today's workout. Now, our equipped workout today is a 10 down to one toes to bar. So, right, when we think about that toe bar, it's that tiny movement. My toes would come up and touch the bar that my hands are on. We may not have a bar, so we can sub that with um, a V up, a tuck crunch, a weighted at mat sit up, right? Some type of core challenge that's gonna force you to bring the hip up. And we're then gonna combine that with a shoulder to overhead or an STO. Meaning I wanna get the weight from my shoulder into an overhead position so I could press, which I wouldn't recommend. You could push press where we dip and lock. Push jerk is probably gonna be the most popular where we dip and we land with that bent knee before we stand. And lastly would be a split jerk. Would really only need to come into play if we decide to go heavy on this bar. Our typical is gonna be 135 for the men, 95 for the women, but open and based on the equipment that you have, right? So again, um, we've gotta work within the confines of the equipment that we have access to. If we are doing an unequipped workout, we're gonna default uh, 10 down to one for both movements, and we're gonna need um, some space to do a tuck crunch and wait for a single arm press. So I'm gonna grab our dumbbell. I'm just gonna grab a 15 pound dumbbell here for myself. That 10 down into one, we're gonna do V-ups. So remember with our V-up, our heels start on the ground, hands start on the ground. Maybe I can come in at a better angle here. We're gonna look to get onto that sit bone with the hands and the toes coming up at the same time, and then back down to the floor. If that is too much, then we can tuck crunch. The tuck crunch, we're gonna come flat, Knees are gonna come into the chest, and I'm gonna to look to touch the heels. But again, we're starting in that same extended heels on the ground, hands on the ground position. So once I've done 10 tuck crunches or 10 V-ups, I'm then gonna come either in a seated position because I'm on the ground, or I can come into a standing position, which will allow much more of your core to come into that equation. So from here, we're gonna tuck the elbow into the side, and press for 10 on the right, then we'll switch 10 on the left. That would be one round. We would then do nine tuck crunch, nine and nine, eight, eight and eight, right? All the way down to one. The finisher for today, if we've got a band, go ahead and grab it. We're gonna hold the two ends of the band and pull through and just get a lot of blood flowing through that upper back. If we don't have a band, we should have a dumbbell, a barbell, an odd object. We're gonna do 100 light, hear that, light weight, bent over row. So chest to the ground, from here I'll pull in for 100. Again, when we have these high volume finishers, the goal is not to crush ourselves with 10 and then need a long break and then take 10. The goal is to try to do 100 reps straight through. So we wanna stay light on our finishers. So that ends today's work. Get after it. I expect fast times when we want our goal to be under 10 minutes so that we can get in and get out and on with the rest of the things we have to do with our day. If you have any questions, let me know. And we'll see you guys tomorrow.